on Market Table, I'm visiting Medina's historic public square. Join me as I browse the farmer's market, meet the local farmers and vendors, and create a simple, family-friendly meal using fresh, organic produce. In this episode, I'm shopping for the ingredients to make homemade-ish milk chocolate coffee brownies. To market we go. My name is Kristen Gambasini, and this is Market Table. Medina Creative Housing, which is a nonprofit here in Medina, and I am smelling this amazing coffee. This is a wonderful setup you guys have here. You actually have some greens here as well, which is so cool. Tell me a little bit about what you're doing here. And first of all, first and foremost, introduce us to the people here standing waiting patiently for their moments on the camera. <laughs> I, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Medina Creative Housing and to the wonderful people that are part of Medina Creative Housing, who are in our housing, who are in our 18 different programs. Here we have our coffee roasting, and we have our hydroponic greenhouse, and our Grand Cafe and Roastery. We have Dylan, we have Elijah, Anthony, we have Anthony, all here to serve you at the farmer's market here on the square in Medina. We, as a nonprofit organization, we've been in Medina County for 29 years, and it's our mission to provide housing, services, and supports to individuals with disabilities to enable them to live their lives with dignity and opportunity. Our programs, our vocational programs, we have 10 of them, and we source our beans directly from the growers, bring them into Medina to the Grand Cafe, and we roast them for your enjoyment. The Grand Cafe is located on Grand Boulevard next to Home Depot and GFS. We have a hydroponic greenhouse on North Huntington Street and Reagan Parkway and we grow all kinds of different lettuces, herbs, kohlrabi, um, different produce and that we provide to the community for their health. Uh, you can't eat anything healthier than hydroponically grown produce and we provide that here at the market. We also source that and put it into all of our um, offerings at the Grand Cafe, our salads, our soups, our wraps, all with our hydroponic grown lettuce. And tell me a little bit about your coffee. We were talking before we started taping and you were telling me that, you were telling me actually about the beans themselves and uh, something interesting, none of them are flavored. It's, it's basically the strength of the coffee, right? So um, what's unique about our coffee is that we do not flavor our coffee. Each bean that we bring in and that we roast uh, is unique in its flavor and it, in, its, uh, in its makeup. And we roast it at different temperatures to different degrees to different light, medium, dark roasts. And that really is what brings out the flavor and the uniqueness of our coffee and the freshness. Again, we roast it right here in Medina County and you can't get a fresher. Always. I know. Oh yeah, dogs barking, bells ringing. When it's done, we'll start off with that it's roasted right here in Medina County. <laughs> it's real loud. Like, back there wants to be bad, up here. Like, I bet, I bet. So, our coffee is roasted right here in Medina County, right on Grand Boulevard and Creative Living Way. And you cannot get a fresher uh, bean, a fresher cup of coffee. And we appreciate the community support when they come out and buy our coffee, buy our lettuce, buy our pesto, come to the Grand Cafe. It is supporting individuals with disabilities in their pursuit of living independently and earning incomes. Now, my final question for you is, I am going to be making a brownie using coffee. And a lot of people don't realize how coffee actually enhances the flavor of chocolate. So I want something 
a little bit stronger because my goal is to really pull out that coffee flavor. So what do you suggest for this recipe? So I suggest two different options. We have a Colombian Bold Supreme, which is our darkest roast. And this would be delicious with chocolate and a brownie. Yes. Um, we also have our Italian Roast, again, which is a dark roast and would enhance the flavor of the chocolate. We use both of these at the Grand Cafe. We have a bakery and we bake our, our bakery fresh every morning and we do a vegan chocolate coffee cookie. Oh, okay. Um, and we do uh, coffee brownies as well. Okay. So those would be two excellent choices for you, for your baking, and again, would really enhance the flavor of the chocolate and really bring out the richness um, and Which the flavor. Which is exactly what I'm going for. Absolutely. Thank That's you. a good option for you. Thank you. So today's recipe I'm very excited about because it uses a little trick that I called homemade-ish. And it's something I use a lot in my book, Crafty Family Ideas, which for, for sale right now, just in case you want to know. But homemade-ish means that you're starting off with something that's pre-made and you're adding to it and making something that tastes homemade. So we're going to be making our chocolate coffee brownies using our Creative Living Coffee. And what's great about this recipe is you can save your leftover coffee from that morning if you have any. If you're a pot drinker, obviously the Keurigs and the single cups, you can make one cup for this recipe, but it can be cold. It does not have to be hot coffee. And what the coffee does is it actually pulls out that flavor of chocolate, which is really, really amazing in a brownie. So I'm starting with some pre-packaged brownie mix that I already have opened here. And again, anything, any type, any brand of pre-packaged brownie mix that you like will work fine here. And we're gonna add to it to make it really have that homemade flavor. So the first thing we're gonna add are four eggs and a half a cup of vegetable oil. So I've already got my eggs cracked here. I'm gonna add my vegetable oil. And obviously if you were at home, you could totally use a stand mixer or a hand mixer to mix this up. Uh, but with brownies, it actually works really well to just mix them up by hand as well. So however it is you choose, and we're just gonna make sure we really get those eggs mixed in there. We really get the oil mixed in there. You wanna make sure you're scraping the bottom because we are gonna be adding some chocolate chips to this, which is really gonna make it chunky, but you wanna make sure that you've really got it mixed up well before you do that. So we've got it all mixed up. We are gonna add a tablespoon of vanilla as well as a quarter cup of that coffee we were talking about. And I actually have it all measured out here. And this is actually a great trick too if you're making a boxed cake mix to add a little bit of coffee to it. It really adds to that flavor. Um, and to be honest with you, if you're not using a very bold coffee, if you're not using very bold coffee beans, you don't even taste the coffee. It just really enhances that chocolate flavor. So we're gonna make sure this is really mixed up. I like to add a little bit of peanut butter. If obviously you're serving this someplace where you're not sure about allergies, you might wanna steer clear from the peanut butter. But at home, Anytime I can add peanut butter to a dish, I definitely, um, I definitely try to because we love peanut butter. So I don't know, I'm probably gonna add, I would say this is probably a quarter of a cup, maybe a little bit more. And I wanna make sure it's getting really mixed in there. And the reason you wanna add it last is because the peanut butter actually mixes into the batter a lot easier once your batter is completely mixed up and wet versus trying to put it in with a bunch of the dry ingredients. If I were at home right now, my kids would be standing here asking to lick the spoon. So we've got this all mixed up. The final step is gonna be add the chocolate chips. I prefer to use milk chocolate, chocolate chips when I use them in recipes, cookies, anything. But if you prefer semi-sweet, that would work as well. I'm gonna add probably about a cup of milk chocolate, chocolate chips. Okay. 
And once you've got it all mixed up, you're gonna put it in your pan. I already have my baking pan here. I've got some nonstick spray sprayed inside of it. You could also use some parchment paper if you wanted to. When you pour this in, you're gonna see the chocolate chips tend to settle down at the bottom of the pan, which is why it's really, really important to make sure that you have a nonstick coating down or a nonstick spray down on your pan because the chocolate chips will stick during baking. So we're just gonna pour this out here. Smells delicious, so good. Scrape the sides, make sure you get all that in there. You'll probably notice some streaks of thicker peanut butter, which is actually really good. It's kind of just bakes that way and it makes it just have little spots of extra peanut butter in there, which is not a bad thing. So you would want to put this in your oven for 350 degrees for probably around 40 minutes. You can follow the baking directions on the back of the box of brownies, but keep in mind it might take a little bit longer because of our added ingredients. But what you end up with are these delicious brownies. I'm gonna flip one over just so you can see. There's the chocolate chips. They're amazing. My kids have already taste tested them at home. Trust me, they're so good. And mm, because I use the darker, bolder coffee, you can really taste that coffee flavor with the chocolate, which is good. It's amazing. So I hope you enjoy and I'll see you at the market. Head to KristenGambassiniBlog.com for this recipe and others seen on Market Table.